Welcome to my presentation. The topic of my presentation is Islamic microfinance in Bangladesh opportunities and challenges. I am Niaz Magu Muhammad from Bangladesh, uh, currently doing my PhD at IIUM. So uh, what are the objectives of this study? Uh, in this study, I wanted to understand the importance of Islamic microfinance for the people of Bangladesh and why the what are the Sharia principles regarding in, uh, Islamic microfinance. Uh, you know, uh, Bangladesh is the pioneer in terms of implementing microfinance system, and, but uh, the Islamic microfinance is still in, in a very initial stage. So I want to highlight why the Bangladesh is still lagging in terms of successfully applying Islamic microfinance products and services. And finally, I want to discuss the steps that need to be taken by the government, civil society organizations, and the financial institutions uh, to popularize the Islamic microfinance systems in this country. So in this uh, study, I used mainly a qualitative approach uh, for collecting the data. Uh, I used two approaches. First, I interviewed uh, 15 experts in, on Islamic microfinance. They are all working in different Islamic banks in Bangladesh. And I also gathered secondary research uh, secondary data from the different papers published in international journals and conference proceedings in the last 10 years. And I use thematic analysis system for analyzing the data. So the importance of Islamic microfinance in Bangladesh, you know, uh, Bangladesh, there is a pro in Bangladesh, the poverty problem is severe. So I want to uh, highlight why, why and how uh, how Islamic microfinance can be used to uh, for the people uh, to get, help them get out of the vicious circle of poverty. I want to also explore how Islamic finance can be used for reducing their vulnerability. You know, uh, Bangladesh is a disaster prone country, um, natural disaster. So uh, when these types of disasters happen, uh, people become very vulnerable. So I want to see uh, how Islamic microfinance can help them reduce vulnerability. And uh, uh, Islamic microfinance can also make them a uh, productive workforce and help them access formal financial services and making them bankable. So Islamic finance, microfinance can be very much useful to enhance financial inclusion in this country. And finally, uh, Islamic finance, uh, microfinance can be used to improve their social socioeconomic conditions so that they can live in a society with dignity and respect. So uh, what are the Sharia principles of Islamic microfinance? You know, Allah said in the Quran, uh, chapter number 70, verse number 24 to 25, meaning and from their properties was given the right of the needy, petitioner and the deprived. So we are instructed by our uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we must uh, try to help the poor. And Islamic microfinance can be a very good way and very effective way to help the poor. And uh, Muslims are encouraged to share their wealth with the poor through different means like zakah and wakh. And Islamic micro Islam promotes economic empowerment by, by transforming idle assets into income generating uh, and for building uh, capacity and providing with the poor. So the maqasid sharia is very important in Islamic microfinance and Islamic microfinance serves many crucial aspects of maqasid sharia like economic development, poverty alleviation, wealth circulation and distribution and ensuring social welfare of people. So what are the integral components of Islamic microfinance? We can see there are some uh, important components of Islamic microfinance. First of all, it has to abide by the sharia compliance. Then the debt avoidance, this is important. The charity is an integral component of Islamic microfinance. And most importantly, economic empowerment through Islamic microfinance products and uh, programs. Uh, the main target should be to enhance economic empowerment of people. And Islam Islamic microfinance can also enhance cooperation, solidarity, family cohesiveness, and exemption from riba and gharar. Riba means interest and gharar means uncertainty. So these components has to be exempted in Islamic microfinance. So what are the opportunities of Islamic microfinance in Bangladesh? Why we should, we are talking about this, why we should consider Islamic microfinance and why we should try to popularize Islamic microfinance in this country. 
Uh, in Bangladesh, more, there are more than 170 million people, but 89% uh, are Muslims. But very unfortunately, it is a poverty stricken country and 30% of them live below poverty line. And Islamic microfinance field is not very old in this country. And as the main microfinance providers like Grameen Bank, Koshika, et cetera, they are only concerned with uh, the conventional system of microfinance. And Islamic microfinance industry accounts for only 5% uh, share of the total microfinance market in Bangladesh. Uh, in Bangladesh, more than 37 uh, million people are using different types of conventional microfinance uh, products but only 5% of them are using uh, Islamic microfinance products. So we have, we need to improve this stat. So uh, why Bangladesh is still lagging behind in terms of implementing Islamic microfinance? These are the challenges actually. The number one is lack of enabling policy and regulatory environment. In Bangladesh, we have Bangladesh banks for Bangladesh bank for regulating the uh, banks, but there is no authority to regulate the microfinance institution, particularly the Islamic microfinance institution. Uh, the PKSF is there, but their activities are not effective, in fact. In Bangladesh, uh, we have limited assets. Uh, you will find, hardly find uh, assets for implementing the microfinance programs. And ensuring Sharia compliance is an issue. And also uh, ensuring the sustainability of Islamic microfinance products. Uh, it makes it difficult to implement, to make sure that the sustainability is and ensure. The product diversification issues are there. Uh, in Bangladesh, only the Murabaha system is uh, popular in terms of Islamic microfinance. So we need to try to see whether other forms of uh, products can be uh, uh, acceptable or uh, applicable in this country. And people are not uh, very much knowledgeable about the Islamic microfinance issue. So they are not interested to use those products. And we have poor linkages with a capital markets and Islamic microfinance institutions. And there are lack of appropriate marketing of Islamic microfinance products and no proper government support and shortages of experts in Islamic microfinance. Lack of Islamic microfinance institutions in rural areas. You will hardly find any effective microfinance institution in different rural areas, particularly the coastal areas. And the reporting is an also issue. The Islamic microfinance institution have no organization to report. And the higher education institution, they are not focusing on this Islamic microfinance issue. No courses are available, available at uh, uh, honors or master's level. So how can we implement Islamic microfinance in Bangladesh effectively? The first one we have uh, Islamic commercial banks has to uh, have to come forward uh, with establishing units with new and innovative Islamic microfinance products. Uh, using external supervision, internal control, and the establishment of associations, Islamic rural banks and cooperatives need to start offering Islamic microfinance services. The micro Islamic microfinance institution should, should be appropriately financed through savings deposits and equity of the members. Different methods like Islamic crowdfunding, zakat, waqf, sukuk can be used as the source of funding. funding. And other uh, measures that can be taken is appropriate skill development training should be offered to the users of microfinance, as well as the staffs of Islamic microfinance. And this system need to be innovative enough to reduce the transaction costs and risk. And particular initiative need to be taken to make people aware of Islamic microfinance products and the benefits of using them. And partnership based contracts like Mudaraba, Musharaka, and Qard Hassan need to be introduced for Islamic microfinance. And the government should come forward to provide all sorts of legal and financial institute assistance to Islamic microfinance. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your patient hearings, hearing, and uh, best of luck. Thank you.